Hey guys, welcome back to the Max Spence Business Podcast. Today I have a very special guest, but before I jump into that, if you guys like the content I'm putting out, the people I'm interviewing, please like, subscribe, leave a review. It helps out a ton with the podcast and also the people that are coming on the show. If you can go over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review, that helps out a ton as well. So without further ado, today's guest is Jared Goldsmith. So he's the founder of ESAC's uh, networking community for small business owners. He's also one of Ottawa's most recognized networkers. It's great having you on the show, Jared. Hi, um, Max. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So for people that maybe, um, you know, ha haven't come across your content on YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, why don't we just start with like, uh, you know, where did you grow up? What university did you go to? And what was your first passion? Perfect. Uh, thanks, Max. Well, I had a very different background. I grew up in Montreal, in the West Island part of Montreal. I went to McGill University for music and archaeology. Now, after then, during that time, I've been playing the saxophone since grade seven, a long time ago, and never wanted to go into music as a career. It was just a passion. It was a hobby of mine growing up, I'm playing in all these bands, and you know, that's what I've done. After my undergrad, I went to Edmonton, University of Alberta. I did a graduate degree, a master's degree in archaeology, but I played music around the city and in the university and whatnot. After my degree, I moved back to Montreal. I couldn't find a job. Ended up working a few options here and there, public security for my municipality, et cetera. Met a woman, moved to Ottawa. I thought, how hard is it to get a job in the government? My French is so-so. I have a graduate degree. It was really tough, Max. For years, I was seven or eight years, I was contract this department and three months here, I'd be on EI more times than people can count. But I kept up music all those years. In 2011, my last government job ended. And I said, that's enough. I'm done contract to contract. I went into music full time. I started an all saxophone band called Sax Appeal, Sax Appeal Ottawa. There I learned a lot about entrepreneurship. I never wanted to be a business owner, let alone something in music. And I started going to networking events. I joined at that time all of the chambers of commerce or boards of trade. There were five of them. And after about a year, I was getting some gigs, you know, playing around town. But then I thought of all the networking events I've been to, I could do it better. I was really turned off by how networking was perceived, mostly sales pitches and people are tired of being sold. You know, you got to hire me because of this, this, that, and the other thing. So there's got to be a better way. And then I started ESACs in 2012 as a way to bring together Ottawa's entrepreneur community for small business as a trade show, originally bringing together all of these different chambers of commerce, boards of trade, because the purpose of a chamber is to represent the, the voice of business in that region. They're represented by geography, but Ottawa is a small town. <laughs> and then uh, you, you see the banners behind me. That's an actual picture from some of the trade, one, uh, one a past trade show that I hosted in Ottawa. And I've done both music and ESACs. Sax is kind of cute. ESACs just, it's a separate brand. And yeah, like you mentioned, Max, we have like 700 videos on YouTube about networking and entrepreneurship and small business. And I could go on and on. <laughs> and that's where we are now. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That, that's absolutely incredible. And I'm excited to sort of jump into this uh, because I think right now, like, um, you know, a lot of people see it as COVID. It's hard to networking. It's hard to get to these events. Well, you know, well, the events aren't really like in-person events aren't happening. So it's all over, you know, Zoom and stuff. So some people like, you know, my age, you know, 20 to 23 to 27 is hard, finding a hard time to maybe get to these uh, events or, you know, don't really know how to like, you know, like, you know, when, when you when it was in person, I, I I think it was a little bit easier than, you know, when it was virtual, right? Because now it's like you're at these events and now you're having to like type between people and it's like weird. It's like, how do I open up a conversation? Because usually you just go up and say hi or something. I, so I, I'm interested to hear about this uh, and I'm interested to hear about the business side as well. So uh, why don't we just start off with sort of, um, you know, like what what are some tips and tricks with like networking today like how can you get better at networking in this new landscape of like zoom and you know microsoft like um you know the, the microsoft one and then like all these other crazy ones as well uh so sure. yeah uh, i actually i should start off max is that when COVID started all right event planners and musicians two of the hardest hit industries and i realized i have to change and so that's one of the hallmarks of being an entrepreneur is to being able to pivot and adapt i came across this amazing platform that's not zoom ESAC's virtual events, and I've never been busier. Like uh, President Joe Biden, I helped with his virtual inauguration gala. I hired 20 people. All, I've never been busier 
hosting virtual events. Now, all I have to say is, yeah, networking is very different virtually. I mean, in person, much of the networking is the body language, but here you're only seeing kind of from the waist up, if that. And how many times have you been on the call, Max, and, you know, somebody's checking their phone, they're looking down, and, you know, all you see is the top of their fedora when they're doing that. <laughs> kind of a little hat joke. Yeah. And, like, in real life, it shows that you're not really giving the person all the attention they deserve. Now, everybody knows time is the most important resource we all have. And when you're in a meeting with somebody or, like, face-to-face, -face, let's put it this way. It, it, remember the good old days when we meet in person? If you're looking over somebody's shoulder, scanning the room, it tells that other person that you don't really care about them. They're just a business card to you. Virtual events, it could be very similar. When you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting, stare at the camera. Don't look at your email. Don't, you know, turn, I turned off my email. I turned off my phone. So you don't have any ding dings. If there's kids or animals in the house, close the door. Try to, you know, look professional because everybody knows first impressions matter. And, but virtually, you know, it's what you have on the background. You might have a bookshelf with maybe a book that you don't want to have advertised or shown virtually. Uh, be aware of the lighting. You, you know, because I have a spotlight here. I have a big light here. I have another one here. Have a good camera and microphone, quality Wi-Fi if you can. And all these things to, to do add credibility to yourself. I mean, it depends on the business you're in, right? Like if you um, are an entertainer, you want to have fun things all around. If you're like a real professional business person or you want to, you're a contractor, okay, maybe have like a tool belt kind of on the side. Everybody says dress for success. Well, okay, I got my banners, my pictures everywhere. It's all about branding, but be aware of that virtually. What's happening behind you? Make sure, hmm, this might sound a little basic because we're already a year and a half into it, Max, but be aware of if there's a window behind you, people can't see your face that well because the silhouette, have the good lighting, which I talked about before. Get rid of the distractions. Look in the camera. Ask questions. Here's a, here's a big thing. E even in, in person, Max, people say, you know, uh, what do you do? Why do you do it? Oh, I do this. I'm so great at this. I could do this. I could help you with this because blah, 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 blah. And they start listing why they're so great and why you have to hire them. That's not really networking. That's more of a one like a sales pitch. People don't like to be sold. Mm -hmm. Even when you're talking face to face, talk non-business questions first. You know, I asked you, what part of town are you in? Because we're both in Ottawa, which is nice. Um, you know, what do you do on weekends? You know, telling me about your wisdom tea taken out. I had my wisdom tea taken out. We already had something in common. Try to find something in common with somebody. It could lead to a whole other avenue of conversations that's not business related. Something I think a lot of your uh, viewers will, will notice, Max, is Networking shouldn't all be about business. It's a long-term goal. It's a long-term game. People like to do business with those, you've heard the expression, know, like, and trust. It takes time to develop the, that rapport with people. You see somebody on a Zoom call. You see somebody at one of the ESAC's uh, virtual events. You see somebody at an Audible Board of Trade event. Okay, they're, they're kind of, they're committed. You see them all the time. And then every time you ask them a few different questions, you start developing a relationship with them. Not all the time somebody's going to need your wears the services right away, but because you're active in the community, you go to the events, virtual or otherwise, you're engaged on social media, connect with them on LinkedIn, follow up, look, subscribe to their YouTube channel, check out their podcasts, have something to talk to them about next time you see them. So that when they or they hear of somebody needing your products or services, they'll probably remember, oh, there's that guy with the red blacks hat, I got to give him a call or the guy with the fedora. You see, I just looped you into the conversation there, Max. It's it's a matter of, of being visible and being seen. Mm -hmm. You know the expression, it's uh, it's not who you know, it's what you know, mm -hmm. but it's also who knows you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you can have a great product or service, but you have to be active on social media as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 100%. And, and that, that, that that's actually some great advice. Cause that, that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Cause I, I'm slowly building like a, a, a media editing business is like a media editing business, helping people put out, you know, video content for like their brand. Um, and I'm trying to figure out like, um, you know, what's the best way to approach the, like, you know, um, you know, cause you don't want to come off too salesy, but then like, you don't like, you know, you, you want to make sure that the people know like what you're doing. Right. So like trying to balance that between like, Oh, it's just another sales pitch to actually being like, 
hey, like this is like, I would love to help you create something I, I think is a little bit difficult. So uh, I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Like how, how like, I, I know you already mentioned some bits of like, you know, not just always talking about business, finding things that you're sort of like, um, you know, you connect on and other bits of that. But do, do you have any other bits of advice, uh, you know, with like LinkedIn and Zoom and all these other chats, uh, all this other stuff, how, how, how you can actually grow, uh, you know, your, your, your sales and your business? Oh, Max, I have tons of little tidbits. I'd be, we have a few hours to talk, right? <laughs> um, a lot of people say, you know, we have two ears and one mouth. We should be listening twice as much as we talk. That's such an important part of networking. A lot of the times I used to meet people in person. Oh, hi, nice to meet you. And they start going off into why they're so great. They might be new at networking. And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. hi, I'm Jared. What's your name? because they, they just got so nervous that they have to give me their sales pitch. And I kind of threw them for a loop. It's like, why is this person asking me for my name? I'm trying to sell them something. Well, again, it, it takes time to develop that rapport. Ask questions. Doesn't matter if it's virtual or in person. You know, why did you start the business? You know, what is it about the business you absolutely love? Do you work on weekends? Why do you work on weekends? Uh, you, you know, what's the most... Uh, best thing about like what you do what don't you like to do in your business or and and the person is wondering why you're asking these questions there is a reason for it it's because you're you're structuring the present the the conversation by hearing what their issues are so that you when you reply you can answer what their pain points are and then they might be able to hire you it's a matter of listening to what their needs but you have to ask the questions to get there. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, no, hundred percent. It's 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 going like, um, yeah, and that and that's that that's one thing that that I've been looking at with like so the clients that I have. It's like what like how how did I get these clients? And like you know like like that's something that I've been thinking about. Is like how, how did I get these you know these clients already right? And what I realized the clients that I have are sort of like we we were friends before we were clients. Right. So like we knew each other, we would have conversations. We got along well with each other. And then, you know, one day they said like, Hey, you know, like, um, one guy reached out to me and he said, Hey, like, I, I know you're doing like the, you know, like video editing and stuff. I, I'm, I'm going to be coming out with a podcast. You know, I want to have some videos created uh, and I want somebody to just handle the editing side of it. And that's sort of how that sort of started a bit. And I was like, and I was like, wait a second. I was like, this is super interesting. Cause like, you know, sometimes I would go on LinkedIn, like, and I would just like reach out to people and be like, Hey, you know, are you looking for video editing? I'll do video editing, all this other type of stuff. And sometimes that's a hit or a miss, but like this, the ones that have sort of been like um, the best of, you know, like, and the, the best clients are the ones that I already had like a relationship beforehand, um, you know, and, and, and then, and then we sort of started, you know, working like in a business sort of sense. So I was, is there like a way, like, I mean, this, 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 uh, yeah, the, the, this might, I don't know, this might sound a little bit bad, but I, I'm just interested to sort of see like, like how can you speed up that process of like building that better relationship to increase sort of your sales side of bringing in new clients. Right. Um, and like, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of interested to hear about that, like for, for your own business, right? Like how, how have you approached bringing in new clients for your business? Absolutely. A lot of us don't have the, the time, let's say two years to develop that rapport with somebody. I mean, it depends on your services. If you're selling t-shirts, the sales process or the funnel is very different than if you're selling a $4,000 social media package or, you know, whatever the case may be. One thing is before you have a meeting with somebody, what's the word, creep? them, they check them out on LinkedIn, Google them, find out, connect with them on Facebook. If they have an Instagram account, follow them, read, look at some of their podcasts, know a little bit about the person and ask questions. For instance, you might find that, um, you know, by checking out their LinkedIn profile, oh, you went to, I don't know, Marianopolis College. Hey, that's the same college I did. No way. What year did you graduate? You know, it has nothing to do with business, but you're actually developing that rapport much more quickly than just jumping into a meeting cold and not knowing much about the person or their business for that matter. A lot of the time salespeople, you know, they're under the gun. You have to get X amount of dollars in three months or you're gone, you're canned. Oh crap, you know, what do I do now? I have to perform. Cold calling, meh. Word of mouth, gold. I would suggest reaching out to some of those people. Like, you know, if it's time consuming to have one-on-ones, host your own events. One of the reasons why I'm so known, at least in Ottawa, is by I would host these big trade shows. I would bring a lot of community partners and stakeholders and government departments in 
I would go to a lot of events. People knew me. Well, they still know me. And all that social media, like I said, 700 videos mm -hmm. on YouTube. They're all original stuff. It doesn't bring me much business, but the credibility is through the roof. Like if somebody were to Google my name, you'll probably find a whole bunch of things. Oh, oh, you ran for city council in 2018. Yeah, well, I saw it on YouTube. Hey, that's really cool. Thank you. Uh, all of these things you could do ahead of time before you actually meet somebody. Be aware of what you have on social media, especially for the younger generation. You said the, the demographics, what, 20 to 27 or something. I wouldn't suggest using your personal, let's say Facebook or Instagram post for what you did last summer. And hey, here's a great time of me camping and my girlfriend in the bikini. Oh, whoa, as a business, you have to be very careful about what's visible. If you haven't already done so, go through, let's say your Facebook pictures, delete the pictures you don't want to see visible. Because if somebody's going to hire you, especially to represent their brand for social media or marketing or video podcasting, whatever, they're probably going to look at your profile and go through your pictures and your posts to see what type of content you post. If you talk about how you party every weekend, even if it's on your personal page, a lot of prospective clients, they don't differentiate. At least this is my opinion. Yes, you could have a personal business page and Facebook page, don't link them, but be aware that somebody who's doing their due diligence will probably find it. I mean, this is nothing new, especially for the, uh, the age demographic who've grown up with social media, but just be aware of that. And there's never a better time to go back and review it testimonials, references, referrals. If you have like a Google business page, which is probably a wise idea, it doesn't matter if you sell Avon or you know cars, have a business page and ask your past clients for referrals because it's all about the SEO, right? The search engine optimization. The more positivity on you and your business, the keyword searches, the, the higher rankings, it will reflect positively to either direct people to your website or your LinkedIn, or wherever you want to direct people, or your YouTube for that, or your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm kind of getting a whole bunch of content here. I hope that you find some of this useful. No, 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 that 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 that's absolutely amazing, and 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 I love that a lot. Yeah, like th there's tons of good points in there, and like, yeah, um, I, like you know, with like making sure that you know, like with with the SOE, right? Like what's popping up, right? You want to make sure that that like if if you're somebody's looking for business stuff, like your business, like sort of your business page is popping up first. Uh, you know, making sure that's optimized, I think it's key. Um, now, now I sort of want to jump to is, um, you know, w w one thing that I, I find a, a lot, a lot of younger people and, and, and I've dealt with it a lot is like, uh, you know, being nervous around like, you know, uh, doing like, let's say maybe not a sales pitch, but like, you know, like get, having the nerves writing, dealing with nerves and, um, you know, for public speaking and all this other type of stuff, how, and, and, and I know you're like, from what I've seen from YouTube and you've hosted a lot of events, like you, you're, you're really good at it. Uh, were you always good at, you know, public speaking? And if so, like, you know, if, if, if you were, uh, like, do you have any tips or anything like that about how, how, how to get better at it? Oh, absolutely. Actually, uh, Max, I was very shy in high school. I couldn't talk to women. It was really weird. But um, when I started up my business, I had no choice. I had to get out there and promote myself because no one else was going to. My, munis my musicians, they're all contractors. They don't do anything on social media. They would do nothing for the business. They show up at a gig. They're the best players I've ever seen. They do a great job. I hire them for the next gig. The entire business marketing, the business was me. If I'm not out hustling, nobody is. And that has really stuck dear to my heart. So if I'm not posting on social media, if I'm not getting a gig, I'm going to go out of business. And the same thing with ESACs. I have no staff. A lot of volunteers and community partners. Great. You get what you pay for. But uh, getting out of your comfort zone, you know, people say networking skills. It's a skill. You can get better at it. It's like swimming. You get better or you drown. <laughs> business, it's you have to promote yourself or your business or you're not going to get, you're not going to stay in business. Mm -hmm. So I would say that a good way to approach it is whatever widget product service you're selling, imagine if you don't have a plan B. You might have a partner, a parent, whatever, who works in government who has a steady income. That's awesome. But imagine if your business was the only income you had. Are you going to pay rent? How do you pay for food? You have a, a mortgage to pay or rent or how do you pay for your car, car payments? I think that people who approach the networking side, like they have to make it work or they're going to be looking for work. 
by by thinking of it that way, you'll do things differently. You'll probably become much more efficient. You probably will turn off Facebook just for pleasure or streaming Google just because you're wasting time or watching Netflix. Everything you should be doing should be focused, working on your processes. You know, again, this is doesn't really have much to do with networking right now. Again, Max, I talk a lot about entrepreneurship and stuff, so I'm kind of bringing that in. But when you start treating the business as your full-time job, that you have to make it work, you'll find ways. And that means finding clients. Looking for people on LinkedIn is a great resource. If you're not on LinkedIn right now, let's say the younger generation might not even use LinkedIn much, do it. Because that's where your clients are probably going to be. I mean, it depends on your you know, what your service products are. If your clients are mostly on Instagram, then you want to use Instagram heavily and you'll probably get some gigs. If they're on LinkedIn, use LinkedIn a lot. You know, most of my clients are word of mouth at this point, LinkedIn occasionally, Facebook occasionally. Twitter was my main post, my main social media for a while, right? I think one of my, my ESAC's networking account, we have about 20,000 followers. Most of them aren't in Ottawa by now, but I find I don't get a lot of gigs on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, so I don't use it all the time anymore. Mm -hmm. But finding out where your clients are and, and honing in on that. But I mentioned earlier about the referrals. Finding the people who were happy with your products or services and ask them, you know, you know, after you've done a successful gig, oh, you know, thank you. It's a pleasure working with you. Um, do you have anybody else uh, you think who could benefit from, from what I offered or what I provided to you? And they think, oh, okay, let me think about it. Maybe they could give you a couple of names on the spot, but ask if they could initiate an email correspondence connecting you. Because if they say, hey, I met this guy, Max Spence, he did a great job on my social media. I think it's worth you having a chat with him. That's a, that's a soft referral. It's much easier for that person's contact to follow up because chances are that, let me see if I'm trying to make this sense. Your client has relationships with other people, obviously, that might've taken 20 years to build. So when they, when they send a referral, it, they take it personally, right? Referrals, you can't just refer anybody under the sun because it's your name on the line. Mm -hmm. Be responsive. You know, when somebody contacts you, reply right away. Everybody says, oh, not everybody. There's, there's a fair people out there who says, what's the optimal time to follow up with somebody after a networking event? You got somebody's business card. Again, in the good old days, you have somebody's business card. When do you follow up? Uh, the same day, if 24 to 48 hours or three or four days, I would always say sooner rather than later. Something I became known for, Max, is when I come home from an event, I have all the business cards there, like let's say 20 business cards. I would enter them all into my database, which was just Excel, nothing fancy. And I would send them all a customized email. Like the same day, I would stay up at light and just to get it out. And people would say either, wow, who is this Goldsmith guy who, who sends me an email an hour after I meet him? Or, or either this guy's really persistent or this guy's brilliant. Mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. everybody everything under the sun yeah but um it's position yourself yeah yeah 100 yeah, and, and 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 yeah i i i i like that a lot as well um so now moving on to uh you know building a, a networking company uh like people that are listening that maybe want to start their own you know uh you know event event company or a networking company um you know how, how did you sort of get started with that like opening your own events was it like did you rent a space you know or did you like um, you know, did you borrow a space from like a friend or something? Like how, how would you sort of get it started? Well, you have to have the idea, you have to have a vision, right? Every entrepreneur, they know where they want to be in let's say two years from now. It's a matter of getting there. It's like setting goals for yourself. You know, do you want to lose weight? Okay, well, every day you walk an extra five feet. By the end of the year, you're probably walking an extra, I don't know, three kilometers or something. So it really adds up. Same thing with running a business. It doesn't matter if it's an event planning business or a music uh, group. It's having that vision and how do you get there? But there's a lot of steps to do. In my case, I think in some of my videos, I talk about the history of ESACs. We started off at Maxwell's on Bank Street. I'm not maybe a bit before your time. They closed a few years ago. And it was on the second floor. And I thought, okay, I want to host these events every three months. And actually, there's a reason for that. But you know, for sake of time, we'll skip it right now. And we had, I think, 30 people-ish. Then three months later, we had, I think, 40 or 60 people, three months later, maybe 50 to 60, 80 people. I don't know. Then I changed the venue and I got more stakeholders involved. And then we went to Lago at uh, Dow's Lake and we had what 280 people. 
And I realized at that point, this is going to turn into something big. Then we moved to Fun Haven, you know, for about a year and a half, every three months, a big event. It was growing, growing, growing. And then we went to the horticulture building at Lansdowne Park. And that's where these pictures are from. That's one of my events at the horticulture building. That venue, well, it's not cheap, but you have to, you know, the expression dress for success. If you want to have a high-end event, then go to a high-end venue. Yes, you're going to pay for it, but the credibility you get is immense. Again, all that video content, record everything because then you could reuse it. Because if you look at any of my videos on YouTube through ESACs, almost all of those videos are what they call evergreen. There's no date. So somebody seeing it for the first time, wow, Brett Wilson's talking. Yeah, I probably have about two dozen videos or more of Brett Wilson. Each video is a separate, you know, a one hour uh, event with him probably came out to about 15 videos because each question is a separate video. Always think about how you can leverage what you do to stay in business in the future. Mm -hmm. So how, 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 like, uh, that's one thing I'm sort of interested in with the events, like, uh, how do you sort of monetize like the, the, you know, a, a, an event and networking company? Is it, is it like, you know, is it per the tickets or, you know, like merchandise or like, uh, services, mm -hmm. connections, like how, 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 uh, how do you sort of do it in, in, in your business? I'm interested to hear. Uh, monetizing on networking events. It's a tough one. I've been to a, a ton of events, you know, a lot of free ones. I don't tend to go to free ones anymore, but I would be at an event Let's say I'd be exhibiting an event and so at a free event. And somebody says, Oh, tell me about your ESACs event. Yeah. We have come, one coming up in a few weeks. Here's a flyer and we're going to have the mayor and all these, how much is it? Oh, well, we're having, you know, Bruce Linton, Brett Wilson and Steve Cody, all this stuff. I don't know. It's like a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars for a networking event. I'm not paying a hundred dollars. I said, well, what do you do? In this particular case, the guy was an engineer. Okay. I said, um, okay, well, why are you here? I'm here to make business. Okay. Well, uh, have you met anybody here? No. Why is that? Well, I don't know. They're, they don't understand what I do. I say, well, going to a free event versus a paid event who people who want to be there, chances are they have money or more money and they see the value of networking. You have to pay to play. That's it. Yeah. But monetizing yeah. networking events. Yeah. You could charge ticket admittance, but you know, everybody says what's in it for me. The networking component, great. Sponsorships, that's another way to monetize. You know, hosting an event like this isn't cheap, but I don't know if you can see, but I worked a lot with stakeholders, community partners, sponsors, and what do sponsors like? They want access to your demographic. If you could outline who your demographic is, the types of people who are gonna be there, uh, the age range, um, you know, types of businesses they have, it makes it much easier to have people or organizations or governments sponsor events if you could be organized and and have the proof to back it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like um, starting a networking business today uh, or, or an event business today, how, how would you approach it? Uh, you know, like let, let, let's say if, if, if you were 20 in your early 20s and you're like, hey, you know, like I, I, I wanna start a networking business, like this is what I wanna do. Uh, how would you approach it today? It's a good question. I would first, Google ESACs networking, give me a call, and I'd be happy to either consult with you or show you how to run virtual events on, on my platform. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, again, because of COVID, everybody, everything is done virtual, and that's how we've adapted. But find out, you know, no other players in the industry like whatever city you're in, you know, do your research. Go to, if you want to start an event company or networking company, go to a ton of other events. Find out who's who's doing what. What are they doing? I mean, the reason I, one of the reasons I started ESACs was up, up back in 2012, again, I would go to hundreds of events a year. That's all I did. I had a really good pulse on the sense of anything networking in Ottawa. If it was more than one person at an event, I called it a networking event. And I would max, I would have a schedule and I would go to five or eight a day, breakfasts, meetings, lunch, networking events. I had a schedule. I'd just go one part of the city to another. Well, actually it was kind of structured. I was starting like the West End Canada and kind of work my way back to Orleans because that's where I am, if possible. Uh, and then try to partner. You know, everybody says you get further when you work with people. You know, uh, that's something I've really been happy to work in is collaboration. I've never considered any other networking event competition to me because not everybody's going to find value in this event but they might in this event 
But the more events that I knew of, I could act as a resource to help people. Oh, what do you do? Okay, I think this person, you should connect with this person. This organization is really good for high tech. You should call them. When you become known as the resource for people, they're always going to keep you in mind because you're not trying to sell them anything, but I'm just happy to help and partner. There are some organizations in town who treat me as competition. Okay, even though I would offer them often free booths at my events and they still treated me like dirt. Okay, well, it's your loss, too bad. But their attendees, their clients might find useful by attending my events. So it's, uh, I'm happy to help anybody in the community. That's, that's why I'm still in business. Awesome, awesome, it's, yeah. It's so short-sighted. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's short-sighted if you just try to focus on your one thing to the exclusion of others. No, collaboration is the way. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it says collaboration there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm all about. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that. And, and usually like, well, what I've seen from the entrepreneurs that usually go the furthest are the ones that, um, you know, put a, put a, put aside sort of the, the monetary, like the money value and just do stuff to help people. Cause it's crazy. It's like, when you just start helping the more people you help, it sort of just trickles back to you in these like weird little ways, like, and it, and it ends up helping your business. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 I've, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like I've had once in a while, somebody would send me a message like, hey, Jared, you probably don't remember me. I met you at, at an East Nets event, you know, 2014. And you sent me a follow-up email with three contacts that were, you know, that I asked you for. And one of them turned into a client, another turned into a mentor. I just want to thank you. <clears throat> that makes it all worthwhile. And I go through my database. I say, oh, Samantha, yeah, you attended the April 2014 event. And I met you for the first time on January 6, 2012. Like, I says, oh my God, how do you know that information? being very organized. You know, I could go on about some of the, the specifics of networking, but keep a database, be friendly and be open to connecting others with, with your contacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, uh, it, it just makes, it just makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So I, 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 I know we're coming to the end here. Um, so we're, uh, like but before we before we end here, um, you know, do you have any other pieces of advice that you would give to like, uh, you know, the, the younger generation about networking and starting a business? But, but before we end here, yeah, there's a lot of great organizations. The Invest Ottawa's of the world, contact them. A lot of the times they have like a summer student program. Actually, I'm one of the mentors uh, again this year. Uh, depending on your age group, you might be eligible for it. And they, uh, I think they offer funding and mentorship to help you learn about entrepreneurship. There's other organizations, depending on you know your background, and your needs, that might be you might be eligible for. Reach out to them. Say, hey, I'm 23 years old. I'm a woman. I'm starting a business for the first time. I have a young family. Whatever. You might be eligible for certain programs, but you'll only find that out by asking. You have nothing to lose by asking. The worst that'll happen is the person doesn't reply back to you. Okay, it's possible your emails go to junk or spam. But be persistent. Pick up a phone. Remember this thing? It's called it's called a phone. It's not an antique, and um, it's lost. I think during COVID, people don't call as much as they should, mm -hmm. and that's a really big part of networking. But ask people. You know, you know, Max. Um, oh, I see they got wisdom teeth taken out. You know, uh, what doctor did you go? Uh, I have a friend who's looking to get their wisdom teeth taken out. Would you recommend them? Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, always be aware of what's happening and ask for help when you need it. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, we act as mentors. We want to help younger generations. So don't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah. Uh, thank you again, Jared, Jared, for, for coming on the show. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure he he hearing about your story. I, I apologize a bit for the, the internet here to, uh, you know, at, at the end, like sort of dropping off there. But yeah, I, I, I love what you're talking about with, um, you know, like networking and how you approach it and how you approach like sales and, you know, building great relationships. So yeah, it, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, man. Well, thank you very much, Max. More information is ESAX with an A esax.ca and if you want to help uh, we're looking for assistance with the virtual events got you covered that's what i do now awesome